In the mid-21st century, humanity had already set foot on the moon and set its sights on Mars. The first manned mission to Mars is led by veteran astronaut Alexander Shapev. The mission goes well until they try to land on Mars, where a meteor shower and a subsequent sandstorm hit the landing module. Back on Earth, Central Flight Control Head Kovalev instructs Shapev to control the module manually, but this fails to solve the problem. Kovalev then ordered the activation of the emergency return program and separated the smaller module from the main spacecraft, but the system malfunctioned. Shapev manually separates the module, saving his crew, who can now return to Earth. However, Shapev is left behind, stranded on Mars. This profoundly affects Kovalev, especially as a pre-recorded interview about the mission plays on TV, in which he hadn't anticipated such a tragic turn of events. Kovalev and Shapev, who had once dreamed together of reaching Mars, now face a grim reality. As the flight director, Kovalev prepares to tell the world about the disaster, stepping out to face the press. Meanwhile, on Mars, although his module is badly damaged, Shapev manages to establish communication just as Kovalev announces his presumed death and his act of heroism on TV. Overjoyed to find Shapev alive, Kovalev immediately starts to explore rescue options and asks Minister Rogachev to fast-track the next Mars mission to save him despite the high costs involved. At the same time, a popular TV host pitches a space-themed show to the president of a TV network, suggesting they focus on space dogs rather than the stranded astronaut. The network president, however, sees potential in covering Shapev's plight and proposes a live broadcast from Mars. He convinces Kovalev that the show's proceeds would fund the rescue effort, highlighting that humanity does not abandon its own. Despite his initial disgust at the proposal cynicism, Kovalev is compelled by the chance to save his friend. In his office, surrounded by military photos showing that he and Shapev have been friends since their army days, Kovalev commits to launching the rescue mission, learning that only one part of the module remains functional. On Mars, Shapev sets up a robot to scout the vicinity of their habitat, while Kovalev discovers that the power supply, intended to last 30 months, will deplete in just 13. A rescue mission could take off in 190 days, depending on the orbital alignment of Mars and Earth. China and America have the capabilities for such a mission, and coordination with them could enable a rescue within 13 months. Meanwhile, Shapev faces severe rationing to survive. The base's psychologist, Anna, commits to supporting him as much as necessary throughout the challenging year ahead. On Mars, Shapev's robot detects an unidentified movement. Anna assesses Shapev's mental state, but he reassures her he's okay. Following their conversation, the minister declares the mission a success. Since the habitat is functional and the astronaut is cooperating, he even agrees to be part of a reality show. At the central flight control, TV crews get to work. Despite Kovalev's objections, the head of the TV corporation insists the broadcast is crucial for the astronaut's rescue. TV host Grisha tells Shapev to follow his lead for the show to succeed. As the show kicks off, Grisha introduces Shapev to viewers as the man sent to the brink of the universe. Shapev then takes over, charmingly sharing his experiences and insights about Mars, quickly winning over viewers on Earth. Yet, Shapev battles loneliness on the lonely planet. One night, he reports hearing odd noises to Earth, but the communication specialist, Peter, finds nothing amiss, and the connection ends. Back on Earth, the TV host continues to press the TV corporation president to stop filming, revealing the show's real purpose, to broadcast the life and death stakes of a man isolated in space. Shapev's fame skyrockets in Russia and globally, earning him the nickname The Alien. His videos discussing the cosmos amass substantial social media followings, and his live chats attract large audiences. Children send in questions, and Shapev's clear responses endear him even more to the public. However, his newfound popularity stirs envy. As the TV host notes, Anna's fiancé, Piotr, grows jealous of the time she spends talking to Shapev. The show's downside emerges when the live broadcasts, consuming excessive energy, jeopardize Shapev's survival. Yet, the TV corporation president pushes for more broadcasts, arguing that the revenue will hasten the rescue mission. Despite Anna's protests, Kovalev agrees to increase the airtime. Meanwhile, on Mars, 
Shapf is busy with scheduled experiments and notices odd noises that Pyotr always seems to miss. One day, he begins experiencing severe headaches due to mysterious radiation, but they abruptly cease, replaced by the comforting sound of his mother's voice. The following day, he engages young viewers in discussing the cosmos, Earth, and space. The children are captivated, hanging on his every word. Suddenly, he reveals that he's been hearing sounds since his first day on Mars as if someone was trying to communicate with him, and now he believes he's not alone. This revelation triggers concern at mission control. Shapf appears to be hallucinating, prompting the minister to demand an explanation. Psychologist Anna seeks a private conversation with him. During their talk, Shapf admits that the sounds he hears emanate from within him, suggesting he might be the source of the events on Mars, not just a bystander. He feels he's creating the reality around him, including time and space. He shares his belief that humans are responsible for creating and potentially destroying universes and planets. Alone on Mars, he finds the clarity that eludes many on Earth, where everything seems chaotic and overcrowded. He mentions that no one else seems to hear these melodic sounds, leading Anna to conclude they are hallucinations. In a later broadcast, Shapf admits he feels lost, prompting the host to reassure him that people on Earth are eagerly awaiting his return. However, Shapf suddenly cuts off communication with Anna, claiming he's encountered something unusual on Mars, which leads Mission Control to question his sanity, so he questions theirs in return. Earth feels increasingly distant to him. During this time, communications officer Pyotr picks up strange signals. He tries to discuss this with Anna, but she's distracted by the astronaut's erratic behavior and her fiancé's jealous doubts. When Shapf fails to make contact for a scheduled broadcast, Anna attempts to reach him, but to no avail. Oddly, the television network president seems pleased by this turn of events and suggests to the minister that they discuss how this situation could influence the upcoming elections, hinting that if Shapf supported Rogachev, it could help him win the presidency. Back on Mars, a search robot stumbles upon a mysterious, formless entity that has never been seen before. On Earth, Rogachev contacts Pyotr and asks him to contact Mars, offering Shapf a deal he can't turn down. Later, Shapf broadcasts a bizarre message claiming life on Mars, displaying a toy Martian. He then agrees to host a new TV show called Shapf Knows, where he offers advice on nearly every aspect of life, quickly becoming the most famous person worldwide. Anna senses something is amiss and confronts her fiancé, who reveals he did hear unexplained noises on Mars. However, contacting Shapf becomes impossible as all communication lines are shut off. Despite this, the astronaut continues his exploration of Mars alongside a robot. Meanwhile, on Earth, Kovalev meets with the minister. They've gathered the funds and are ready to launch a rescue mission, but the minister suddenly states that a rescue is out of the question. Shapf is considered a mere operational loss. The money raised from the TV show vanishes, the program is cancelled, and Kovalev is let go. As this unfolds, Shapf suffers from headaches caused by mysterious sounds from an unknown source attacking the module. In the meantime, Kovalev seeks help from the president of the TV network, who tells him to wait until the next day. The following day, the show begins with Shapf urging viewers to vote for Rogachev, who is running for president. Just as the minister is seen bowing in front of the screens, a special forces team storms the TV center. The broadcast cuts off, revealing that it wasn't Shapf but a TV host speaking. It turns out that a replica of the Mars module was built in a TV studio, and a digital version of the astronaut was created. The police start an investigation to uncover who orchestrated this elaborate hoax, declaring that there was no accident on Mars and no astronaut was ever in danger. The entire narrative seems to have been crafted for the show. Kovalev is overwhelmed with despair, having lost all hope of saving his friend. At the same time, Rogachev is taken into custody. Amidst the turmoil, Kovalev storms into the flight control center just as news broadcasts announce the death of Shapf. In a tense confrontation with special forces, a gunshot rings out. Meanwhile, the head of the TV network muses over the possibility that Shapf might have been a fictional character all along. However, Shapf is indeed real. A wounded Kovalev reaches the flight control team and communicates with Shapf on Mars. Kovalev expresses his regret on behalf of humanity, 
which he accuses of being driven by greed and power. He reveals to his friend that the government intends to deny the Mars landing, claiming the module never existed and that Shapef had died on Earth months ago. This twist was merely a part of the television narrative. Kovalev urges Shapef to send a sign to Earth, but their connection suddenly breaks. An emergency news broadcast follows, reporting that American satellites have detected an explosion on Mars at Cupid's Plateau. Experts confirm that the blast was from the module of the International Martian Expedition, proving Shapef was indeed on Mars. After the explosion, the narrative shifts to Shapef in the Martian desert, sharing insights from an enigmatic Martian entity. Shapef understands that humans, albeit unintentionally, are the architects of the material universe. Every moment is an act of creation, and humans, by their very nature, construct this material world to comprehend it. This idea parallels the principles observed in the double-slit experiment of quantum physics, which demonstrates the immaterial nature of our universe, matter materializes only upon observation. According to Shapef, humans are responsible for the universe's disasters, as each shapes their destiny on Earth. He suggests that humanity can transform life, the world, and the cosmos if they change themselves. Shapef chooses to blend into the universe in a profound finale, returning to the cosmic essence from which we all emerge.